So as I understood it, the plan was to drive this truck forever. It's been like the best tree truck. Now I'm not saying it hasn't given me like a few little troubles and stuff over the years, but it's been an awesome truck. I feel like the loadout on the side is just the best. It's not one of those big cabs, but there's a little extra room in back. But it seems like the truck had a slightly different plan two weeks ago when it completely cacked out on the side of the road between jobs. The cats have been walking around on it, leaving all kinds of dirt and stuff. So violating all my principles, I found another truck. They added a seven. It's a second hand truck. The guy before me was like really prone to just drilling holes in it, but it's got lower miles. It starts when you turn the key. And I've only done one job in it so far. I spent the last week kind of trying to trick it out. I found a used topper, put that thing on there. I had to postpone a bunch of jobs, but now I'm finally getting back to them and I've got one to do today. The kind of mild hassle about the new truck has just been that it takes all kinds of getting fixed up. It needs the dot numbers. It needs all kinds of stickers with misspelled words and stuff on the sides. And then figuring out the gear storage and everything, which I'm going to show you when we get over there. Too much of this flashy screen, bling bling, sensors, all that stuff. All right, job's up here on the right. Uh, basically, this guy bought this business. It's like a new business starting up. And he wants to be able to see it from the road. And that tree and those bushes and stuff, they're just kind of in the way. You know, like a line of sight clearance type thing. All right, here is the situation. I managed somehow not to roll the truck over still need stickers and stuff this maple bunch of bushes just all this stuff that's blocking the view of what's going to be the business sign right here future business and as for the truck i've kind of got it set up and it's worth mentioning that i try to run like equipment redundancy you know like two bigger saws at least two smaller saws of the big variety and two smaller saws of the small variety. I just didn't have equipment redundancy going when it came to the truck. I also don't have two dump trailers. I should probably get one because, you know. And back here, I've just been running like tubs of, you know, climbing gear, fuel, towing stuff, cleanup stuff. And over on this side, I just got one door on this capper. Long stuff, pole saws and whatnot. You know, port wraps. The previous dude who owned the capper was like a carpenter. So he built all these little finicky shelves and stuff. So I've been putting like chains in there. I kind of like them. My plan for this video was not how to dismantle an entire maple using only a pole saw. But I think I'm just going to keep going on it. Stay alive, run a pole saw. The boss really wanted just one trailer load on this one, so I've been practicing the fine art of trailer cut up. You know, just dicing everything up real small and stuff. All right, so let's just talk for a minute about this new truck purchase. So it's like a truck I'm happy with. I'm not saying I don't like the truck. It's pretty much just a reboot of the other truck. Still an F-350, still a diesel. It's just got a somewhat more legitimate chance of going a few more miles. But the thing is that it was a completely unplanned purchase. You know, my plan, like for this year, was pretty much to buy that mini skid steer, which cost some serious dough, and then just kind of lay low for a couple years before replacing the truck. And when I got that mini skid steer, I remember thinking to myself, I think I was talking to Melissa about this, that I was leaving myself kind of vulnerable because, you know, if the truck went down, I wasn't exactly ready for another big purchase. I always tell people who are asking me about like landscaping companies and starting a tree service and stuff, 
I just tell them, and I know this is not what everybody does, but I tell people, have enough dough socked away to replace all your equipment. Like that's your goal. Your goal is to be able to replace anything you need to replace. That way, if equipment goes down, your business doesn't go down. Like that just kind of makes sense to me. I know a lot of people would just say, dude, I'll just borrow, you know, just get loans for a new truck or a new bucket or a new chipper or whatever. But I just tend to think that equipment going down should not be a reason that your business goes down. It's just ideal to have equipment redundancy where you've got everything backed up. You got two of everything at least. And if you don't have equipment redundancy, at least have some dough so you can get a new saw, get a new rake, buy a new truck, whatever it is. Now my first thought was definitely to blow the back bed out and put a flatbed on this with side boxes. That just gets the boxes a little lower and it allows you for a flip out door that you can kind of work on. But it seemed like kind of a shame to get rid of a perfectly good bed. And I thought I'd try the topper thing. I've run a topper before, but just not without the side boxes. So this has the side boxes. So I got some decals and they arrived actually pretty quickly. I ordered them from some kind of joint online, like decals.com or something like that. Just kind of like some generic outfit, but they were fast, like less than a week. Got the decals, stuck them on the truck. I've had good luck with decals. I know some people do the magnet thing so they can pull them on and off. I was gonna put it on the door, which is why I've always had my stickers and stuff, but mid ship. There was like this small part of me that considered doing the wrap on the truck. Then there was this big part of me that realized it was like thousands of dollars. It's worth noting that it's not like this thing's going to the scrap heap or anything. Oh, I really hope that doesn't happen. It just needs some TLC. If you've worked on these 6.0 trucks, you gotta kind of go through the list of things that the scanner tells you. And I usually like fix one thing, doesn't work, fix another. Right now I've got my eye on the Fickum, which I think the power source of the Fickum is kind of jankly jangly. Anyway, I'm not scrapping the truck. Now on this truck, one of the most useful things I did, one of those things you just never regret was putting the winch on the front. And I went with this kind of cradle mounted front hitch model. So basically there's like a hitch uh, behind the bumper that I put on and this winch can come on and off there's like a quick connect coupler right here. But the deal is that in all the years of running it, I never once took it off the truck. I've used it all the time up front, but I just never swapped it around to the back. So for tree truck 2.0, I went with a more hidden kind of discreet front winch. Not because I don't want the winch to be seen or anything like that. It just seems like a cleaner install. There's a little pocket behind the bumper yank the bumper off and you can squeeze a winch in that little hole. Is it just me or do these trucks always look just better? You know, like a little more Mad Max with the bumper off? And squeeze is the operative term. This thing is from Rough Country. And the roughest thing about the winch is the fact that the instructions are completely opaque and mystifying, like forget about it. They're just full of grainy, dark pictures. You got no idea what's going on with the instructions. In addition, with every bracket you install, you gotta take it off and cut it one way or another. It just took a ton of modification to get this winch installed. I mean, on the one hand, I think it's kind of amazing that things are built to fit different trucks and they actually do work out. And this one did work out in the end. But on the other hand, dang it, it'd be nice if they could just be a little bit better about dialing in the specifics and the fit. Because this thing, literally, it just didn't fit. Like it had to be modified and cut down to fit. I still gotta do power and stuff to the winch, but best thing about it is like the hidden profile. I like that. Absolutely worst thing has gotta be that the disengage engage lever is like wedged way back in here. And I think I gotta hire someone with small hands just to run the winch because that's just the worst. I mean, I could cut out the bumper, but 
got to go on a hand diet, size them down. All right, so here's everything all dialed in and installed. This is the uh, somewhat remote connector for the winch. There's kind of like a little cord that goes from the winch to this plug. Winch cable comes out here. I think I might swap the hook out for something else that's in the future. This is that awkward, hard to reach handle. I think what I'm gonna do, my plan on this thing, is to put like an extender on here so I can like stick it in and turn it or I don't know. It's just, it's just not right. And then I did put a NOCO outlet on here. These are cool. I've used them on the other truck. It just allows you to plug the block heater in without having that cord kind of dangling everywhere. So winch power control is just one of these guys. I don't have the wireless connection. Just this dude. And I'm just gonna say, this rough country winch, it's just a little bit noisy. All right, I've complained about the winch enough. It looks awesome and it's gonna be incredibly useful. Rope bags in the back, that's kind of working out. I feel like I've showed you everything about the new truck. All right, so that's Tree Truck 2.0. It's been nice to have the business up and running again. Got more jobs in the works before winter, like the cold, dark days when the tree surface kind of settles down. At that point, maybe this thing will be parked out of the ice and salt and all that, and I can get back to working on Tree Truck 1.0. This is not necessarily a how-to video, not really. It's just the story of how I did it. Appreciate you checking it out.